Let's do another vacuum, but this time we're going to use a four port manifold gauge set. It has one hose for the high side, one hose for the low side, it has a charging hose for a tank, and it has one large hose for our vacuum. So let's going to do this a little bit different. Now this digital manifold gauge set has a micron gauge built into the manifold gauge set. The problem with that is it's likely to get dirty because of all of the flow of your typical use flowing through that manifold gauge and where the sensor is located is in that manifold gauge set. The other issue is it's not close enough to the system. So what we've done is we've installed a micron gauge port over here at the evaporator coil so we can see what's happening inside the system. So we can compare what the gauge is showing and what the microns in the system is actually showing. With this setup, we're not going to pull the shredder cores out. We're going to use the valves that come with this gauge. This is how you would typically see it. We do have our vacuum pump set up. We have our nitrogen set up. And also we have our refrigerant tank and our scale set up. So a lot of these things will be similar, but we're going to go through these steps a little different. So our valve cores are already in place and we're going to leave them there. What we're going to do is use our quarter inch standard hoses that come with this system. And we're going to use these manual ball valve style valve, which is very popular with the four port manifold. So we'll put the high side on. And even though it's under no pressure, I still use a two finger rule because it's good habit. I'm going to leave this valve in the open position. We're going to take the suction side off. We're going to put it on the actual suction line. And we're going to also open up that valve. Now we have this very large hose. We're going to take it loose and we're going to install it on our vacuum pump. We also see here we have this extra hose or this fourth hose. This says REF for refrigerant on it. This hose for right now, I'm going to take and install this on our nitrogen tank. Okay, we have everything set up and all of these are closed off here and we have these open and this one open. So what we're gonna do is first purge the system just like we did before, except because we have this four port manifold, it's gonna be a few different steps. We're gonna make sure our regulator's backed off. We're gonna turn on our nitrogen tank. And then what we're gonna do is just slowly increase this dial until we see this go up. And it did go up, but because there's no flow, it's sitting back down at the bottom. So we now have nitrogen flowing all the way up to this port right here. So I'm gonna open this port and you heard a little bit of a sound. That was the refrigerant flowing. So next I'm gonna open up this high side valve and that allows nitrogen to then flow through my manifold gate set, through this high side valve, through the red hose and it's now flowing into the system. That nitrogen is gonna come back over here to this point, but because this valve is closed, it cannot go anywhere. So I'm gonna do is just loosen up this and that is allowing the nitrogen to purge out from this point. So in other words, the nitrogen is flowing through the liquid line through the metering device, through the evaporator coil, it's flowing back to the suction line, it's flowing back through this suction valve, and it's leaking out right here at this very point. Now notice that I didn't open this valve because if I did that, nitrogen would flow from here straight across to this point. And I want nitrogen to flow through the entire system. So that's why I've left the suction valve closed and I've opened only the refrigerant side, which is in this case nitrogen, and the high side. So it's forcing that nitrogen to flow through the system all the way through this hose and then it's purging or free flowing out of this connection. And because it's a little bit loud, I have a little bit too much pressure. So I'm just going to drop this down. We can see the balls kind of bouncing around just a little bit at the top. That's about what we want. So we're gonna let this run for just a couple of minutes. We're gonna actually push out any of the leftovers that's in there, any moisture that may have gotten in. I did leave this loose for only an hour this time but I did leave it loose specifically to allow some moisture to get in there so we'd have something to check with. So after we get done purging with that nitrogen, I'm gonna go ahead and put this connector back on. We've flowed nitrogen through, and I'm also at this point gonna open the one that says vacuum. By doing this, it allows that nitrogen to flow straight across the manifold gauge set, that nitrogen to flow through this hose, and that nitrogen's pushing out right here at this point. So I can close this valve off. And now we have purged out this hose. I'm going to close this back off. And since we're done purging nitrogen, I can also close off this one. So now I'm going to go ahead and take off my hose for my nitrogen. I'm just going to loosen this up. We hear the nitrogen flowing out of our flow regulator. You'll see this pressure start to drop, but we're done with our nitrogen tank. Let's just take our service hose and we're going to install this on our refrigerant tank. But we're leaving the tank itself closed. We'll go ahead and turn this tank upside down. 
So now that this tank is completely closed off, there's no flow through it, the hose connection's tight, we'll go ahead and take our scale and we'll zero it out, make sure that we hit the tear button. So everything this scale is reading is zero. And we'll go ahead and turn this off because we're not ready for this yet. We've flowed nitrogen through the whole system. And we can see here at 1.5 and 1.7 PSI. So there's really no pressure at all, that's what we want. What we're gonna do next is make sure that we open our high side and our low side valves. Our high side valve's already open, but we'll go ahead and make sure it's completely open. We'll go ahead and open our refrigerant valve. This side, we'll leave that open as well. So that way now all three of these hoses, the blue, the red, and the yellow, all the way to our tank are connected. But we also need to be able to pull a vacuum. We're gonna pull a vacuum through all of this. So I'm gonna open up the vacuum side. And when we open this up, now it's connected all four hoses. Now personally, I like to start this process off by closing off the two valves at our unit, close these off. So when I first pull a vacuum, I wanna pull a vacuum right here in my micron gauge. Make sure I tighten up this port, make sure these are all tight, and we're gonna start our vacuum pump. So with the vacuum pump running, we're only pulling a vacuum through these two hoses and these two hoses. Our vacuum is stopping right here at this point. So you can see our micron is dropping down really fast, that's a good sign. So we can see our microns are dropping, but we kind of leveled out at about 320 microns. It is still dropping. One of the reasons it's still dropping is because it's trying to dehydrate these hoses. These hoses are going to have some kind of moisture in them, old refrigerant in them. It's going to have oil that's still in there. All that's going to be trapping other refrigerants and contaminants. So as we have this system on and running, it's trying to dehydrate or degas these hoses. It's also possible for these hoses to permeate. In other words, moisture from the air can actually travel through these hoses in a low vacuum. And also, as we use these hoses a whole lot more than we do our vacuum hoses, the connections, the little rubber O-rings inside of here can start to wear out. So that's one thing that we look for. I did put Nylog on all of these connections just a moment ago to make sure that they are all sealed and that's not a problem. So we're down at 257 microns. So we're probably still gonna drop, but the big problem is there's probably moisture in there. Here's a good way for us to check it. We're gonna close off both of these valves right here. Notice that we're dropping down very fast. We're pulling only through this black hose and our center service port to our tank. So we're gonna go ahead and close this valve also. Let's see how low we get to. So we're down to 103 microns. We're still dropping, but notice we're not down around 40 and 30 microns like we were before. One of the reasons is that this hose isn't sealed off. It hasn't been protected like it does with my vacuum hoses. It stays in the manifold gauge set, so it's possible for contamination and moisture to get in here. We see that the number is still slowly dropping, but one thing it's doing, it is dehydrating this hose. So it doesn't mean that that's as low as we can possibly get to. It just means that it's trying to clean out this hose. So now if we open up the refrigerant side, we see those numbers jump back up, but now we're also pulling a vacuum through this yellow hose. The numbers jumped up, now they're pulling back down as we start to dehydrate that hose. And then also we're gonna open up our blue valve you see the numbers jump back up again, and we're also gonna open up our red or high side valve. And we see those numbers jump back up again, and then they start to drop. So if we gave it enough time, we could actually dehydrate our manifold gauge set just by running it like it is now. What we're gonna do is go ahead and open up the system so we're actually dehydrating the whole entire system. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this valve right here. Here the pump change. We're gonna open up this valve here. So now we're pulling through the entire system. One of the things I want to point out is this pump over here. You can see all of the moisture that's being pulled through there. So it's pulling through both of these hoses to the manifold gauge set. It's also pulling from this yellow hose to the manifold gauge set. And it's pulling through this one center hose all the way to our vacuum pump. So I did leave the tank heater on like we had last time. I just left it in place. We have this plugged in so it's going to stay warm. But we notice over here we're down to 1,442 microns. I want to make sure I close off that gas ballast and let it continue to run. So we're registering pretty decent microns over here, 1,520 microns, which sounds great. The problem is, if we look over here at our unit, we're still reading atmospheric pressure. It's not even low enough over here for it to start showing what true vacuum we're at. So even though we're reading a vacuum over at the manifold gauge set, it's not a true amount of vacuum that's happening in our unit itself. We're just gonna let this run a while and see how long it takes. So we finally have it down around 380 microns on our system, on our refrigerant lines over here. 
even though our micron gauge is showing like below 200, like 150 something microns, we still were a big difference between where the unit's at and what this is showing. That's because the micron gauge is located in the gauges. So it's okay to use this setup, but you gotta be mindful that what you're seeing on this gauge side isn't representing what's happening in the actual system. So it took us a little bit longer run time to make sure that we got this system below 500 microns. Now we're ready to do our decay test. So for the decay test, we're simply gonna close off the one that says vacuum. Now with that one closed off, I can turn my pump off. Now we can hear. And I'm also gonna close off the one that says it refrigerant. And that's simply closing off the trail over here to our refrigerant tank. We don't need that part of our decay test. So now we're gonna see how fast we rise up, see if there's any moisture left in there or if there's any kind of a leak left in there. So after 15 minutes, we've completed a decay test. What we can see is we've rose over 500 microns. We're up to 600 microns on our manifold gauge set. But if we look over here at our system, we're still below 400 microns, like 390 or something. So that tells us that our system is clean, dry, and tight. So we still got to the same exact location we need to be. The system is clean, dry, and tight. The difference is we can see the microns have risen greatly on this side, and that's probably because of the permeation through these hoses. Remember these hoses are being used for charging and recharging and vacuum and recovery and everything else. So there's oils in these hoses and also there's a chance of a permeation. Lower the atmospheric pressure pushing through these hoses as well as the oils and all can affect that. So most likely we're gaining those microns through the hoses. Now the reason we're not gaining microns in the entire system is going back to our Schrader cores right here. These Schrader cores are restricting that flow. Because we have these Schrader cores in there, even though we're gaining microns on this side, gaining pressure on this side, it's not pushing to these Schrader cores fast enough to affect our microns over here on the other side as quickly. But that same thing is hurting us on the other side. When we pull the vacuum, we pull these microns down very low Eventually, we pulled these down very low, but it took us a long time. Even though we hit 500 microns here, we were still really high over here on the system because we have that pressure restriction of the Schrader cores right here. We had to pull this down much, much lower for much, much longer to allow that pressure difference of the microns to come out of the system through the piping through the restriction of the Schrader core before it got over here to our micron gauge where our manifold gauge sets before it got over to the vacuum pump and released back into the air. So I'm not saying this is the wrong method, but you just need to understand the difference of what's happening. This is why we want to make sure our micron gauge is as far away from the pump as possible. And this is also the reason that we want to make sure we pull out the Schrader cores because you can see the significant time difference. Four and a half hours total to pull a vacuum is a significant amount of time. So the price of those two hoses or even the single hose set really benefits over this four port manifold set. Now this is just for one scenario. There's hundreds of thousands of different scenarios and applications that go into this. But now that we've gotten our vacuum down low and we also did our decay test, we know that we are holding microns, we're not leaking anywhere, we're now ready to recharge the system. So what we're gonna do next is take our scale, we're gonna power up our scale, make sure it's zeroed out, and then what we're gonna do is open our refrigerant tank, allow our refrigerant to fill up this center hose. Now that our refrigerant's filled up our center hose, we have a few ounces showing here on our scale, so we know that our scale is working, we're zeroed out, and we are ready to start adding refrigerant to the system. So now I'm gonna make sure that I close off my suction side. I do not want liquid refrigerant going into the suction side. So we're gonna make sure this valve is closed completely off. Then I'm gonna leave my high side open, but I'm also gonna open up the refrigerant valve. By opening the refrigerant valve, we're allowing the refrigerant to flow through the yellow hose, through the manifold gauge set, to the high side, the liquid side. It's flowing into the liquid line. Liquid refrigerant flows into the liquid line, boiling from a liquid to vapor, past the meter device and evaporator. It's also boiling from a liquid to vapor in the condenser because there's no pump running. So then we end up with vapor on the top side. That vapor goes back to the compressor. The vapor comes back on the suction side here all the way to this port right here. And the suction comes all the way back on our suction line. So we only have vapor refrigerant coming to that compressor. We have no liquid refrigerant. We still have our crankcase heater, or in this case, our tank heater energized. So we keep the compressor warm. So if there is any mistake, we're making sure that we're keeping as much of the liquid refrigerant out of the compressor as possible. So now we have added refrigerant to the system. And again, you wanna make sure your scale is just, just below what you have with the system when it came charged with, I like to keep it a little bit less. So now we have refrigerant in the system. Now that we have refrigerant in the system, we can do it with our vacuum pump. Got the system charged. We can see our pressures over here. Shut my tank off, because I don't need to put any more in. So we got our tank shut off. And now we're ready to charge like we normally would. We're gonna take our tank heater off. We also closed down our valves. And now we're ready to start the system up. 
Once we start the system up, we can go ahead and put our probes back on and we can start doing our superheat and subcooling. We do our superheat and subcooling calculations. We can continue to throttle in that little bit of refrigerant while it's running to make sure we get our superheat and subcooling where it should be. And right before I get it to where I want it to be, I'll go ahead and close my tank off and throw that last little bit out of this refrigerant hose into the system. That way we were able to charge the system, took a little bit longer, we were able to completely charge the system properly, pull a proper vacuum, get the refrigerant in without any contamination whatsoever. And come back soon, we're gonna have even yet another method for pulling a vacuum.